there's something in me that activates when I see the people. There's something that comes on, that turns on, that says it's go time. It's time to start. It's and I get a lot of satisfaction from that. Especially as a drummer. You know, I have drumsticks in my hand and the drummer usually starts the song. It's like I'm starting that engine and the people are sitting there, they're waiting, they're listening, they're, okay, what do you have to offer? It can be a little scary. You're gonna dive in, you're gonna jump right in and you hope with what you give them, they're gonna, they're gonna enjoy it, they're gonna receive it well. I've put in the time and I think they're gonna enjoy it. I've enjoyed it. And if and and that's that's very important. If you can enjoy your uh, your music, then they will also receive it better. So I I have this sense that they will enjoy it. That's why I want to perform it for them. I don't want to let them down. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to give them four counts: one, two, three, four, and then we all dive in. And at that point, that's where I I just love I love diving into that, especially with the band. And when we dive in to the music watching the reaction of the crowd to our first notes, our first rhythms. We're giving them the tempo. We're giving them the melody. We're giving them this thing that activates them. And we interact with the with the audience. I interact with the audience. I can see the faces. I can see if somebody's really into it or zoning out. Or I can see it. I can feel it. For me, it's not just about the final product of looking at the, okay, we produced this, this album. For me, it's about performing the music. I mean, the drums, when you play drums, there's so much energy that moves through your body. And the, the, the drums, the toms, the, the, the drum heads, and the air that's vibrating, when you hit the drum, it's just this movement of energy vibrating out through, through, through the world. So. I have a lot of energy. I, I can share that energy. It's amplified through the drums, not even through electricity, but through the drum itself and the cymbals. And oh, it's so much fun just to hit a big kick drum. And, and then you add amplification to that and it's even bigger. There's more people that can enjoy it. It's like a big cannon. And that's like, that's the best feeling ever. There's, there's no better feeling that I've ever felt is to when you hit a kick drum and it's amplified through these huge speakers and it roars out like a cannon throughout the audience and it's just this wave of this feeling of this bass boom just hits people it's a cannon i love to share that feeling that's what i feel when i play the drums boom and it adds symbols to that and it's just this explosion that's just the beginning that's just the first part of that and then you move into the rhythm And the drums are really unique in that they were made to be played by multiple people as a drum, like a drum circle or a group of drummers. Uh, you see it a lot in Afro-Cuban playing. Uh, you see different percuss percussion instruments, different people playing each one. And the drum set is a modern instrument where we have stands that are holding up all these instruments and, and one person playing all these things. So. When you, when you know the history of the drum and how it was supposed to be played by different people, then you think to yourself, well, one person playing it would sound like this, and if two people play it, it's going to sound like this. How do you do both of this? Well, I've learned how to do that. And then, I, so I can execute, I can execute some of these ideas that are coming to my mind that were supposed to be played by multiple people, but I can execute it by myself. It just takes time to practice it and you know, what's what I'm hearing in my head, put it out on, on the drums.
I consider myself a working drummer. And what that means is that you learn, you're able to learn the music that is needed for whatever job may present itself. Whether it's the recording studio, whether it's a live performance with a singer-songwriter, whether it's to be able to play in a musical it's learning other people's music or teaching you're working you're doing things that aren't just things you want to do i think a working drummer or a working musician is or a working artist is different than somebody who does it as a hobby and just wants to create something for fun it's it's not always just for fun you have to work you have to put in the work so I consider myself a working drummer. I do play music that I enjoy, but I'm also able to work with others and meet the needs of other musicians. Being a working musician also means you have to practice and rehearse things that you might not want to. And you gotta put a lot of hours into it. You're getting paid to do a job and you have to execute that job. It, it has nothing to do with feeling. I feel like playing today. I'm gonna to play. No, you're gonna work. You're gonna if you're gonna get that job. If you wanna if you wanna keep your job, you're gonna to have to put in the work. So yeah, there's a lot of times you have to practice, and a lot of times you have to play. Even if you don't feel like doing it, you might be tired. You just had a gig the night before, or you got up early or too early, and you're tired. You don't want to practice drums at that moment, but you have to to get the job done. And. If you're working for yourself, you can kind of set the pace, but if you're working for other people who have time commitments or, or you know, the show is coming up and you have a few days, you only have one, one more day to practice, you better put in the hours to practice. For example, I have a drum, if I have a drum solo coming up, I'm gonna put in the practice. And if I have no performance or no solos or uh, nothing coming up, I might not put in as much work. So being a working musician also means that you learn a lot more. You put in a lot more hours than you might have if you didn't have a lot of work. The more work you have, the more work you put in. And it just, it just keeps going. Also, if you're in just one band, you might not need to practice that much. You might have already mastered or learned the songs for that band. But if you're a working musician, the difference in that and being in one band is that you have to work and play with so many different people. So you have to learn quickly and you have to learn and you have to spend a lot of time learning a lot of different people's music. That's what a working musician has to do. And there are a lot of benefits to that. There are a lot of there's a lot of fruit that comes from that. Because when you sit down to do the things, when you sit down to do the things you want to do, you've already put in the work from all the other music that you've had to learn, and you're that much better. When I go to play live, there are drones filming me. There are people everywhere. Everybody's got their phones out. Uh, people recording on multiple devices all at once. And you don't get to tell them they can't record you. You can't tell people, don't film me. They're going to film you anyway. Everything you do is going to be recorded or filmed everywhere you're at. Every so if that's the case, then they're going to be filming some of your mistakes. And I have to be okay with that. <laughs> but now's the now's where the hard work goes in in the underground. I go underground. Drummers usually have to go underground because the drums are so loud. I live in these big, uh, uh, tall buildings, and you can't make so much noise. You can't be stomping on the floor. We have to go down in the basement. So we, we go down into this dungeon, into this cave, and we practice and practice and practice. And when we come out, when we emerge, when the when we come out in the into the light, hopefully we have something that's presentable.
if I don't have a job, I'll probably spend a lot of time practicing skills that will help me get more work. But if you're working already, you don't have time to work on your technique or your ear training or your rudiments or you don't have time to develop more skills you need your reading skills you don't have time because you're working on a specific task but usually inside of that task whatever job it is there are all the elements that you need you still need to work on technique you need to work on reading and transcribing and all those can be developed within that work that's what i try to do i try to develop all the parts that are essential to all the kinds of jobs with each job even if it's not totally required if all the parts are not required I still can develop all those parts if I want to. For example, when I got hired to play a blues gig, I transcribed all the songs. I didn't have to transcribe them. I could have memorized these songs that were more basic, but I wrote out all the parts, which took me more time, but that made me a better transcriber. And then whenever I get another job that requires more memory, more things, more notes to remember, I will have practiced already how to transcribe the music. And I'll be that much faster. Practice is where I spend a lot of time by myself. I have to be okay. I have to be okay with myself. I have to enjoy being with, uh, being alone in a room by myself with with my instrument. I think there's also this uh, way that you can work that is enjoyable where you can actually say, hey, I'm going to live in this space. I'm going to be in this in this studio or in this uh, rehearsal room or uh, with my practice pad for the majority of the time. So I got to be happy. I got to enjoy where I'm at. If I can have that attitude and I can enjoy it, then I actually enjoy the rehearsal parts. Uh, some of them, my favorite times are now working with a band in the rehearsal room. Um, there's a lot of hard work that goes in to the rehearsal, but we have learned to enjoy that time. person now <laughs> that other people are learning from there comes a point where you start to create and develop your own music more than you learn other people's music I've, I've spent a lot of time learning uh, cover songs learning techniques and reading and been to music schools and studied the greatest drummers out there but now it's my time and uh, the world's asking from me what, what do you what do I have to offer So learning other people's music is great because you learn new things that you wouldn't have known. And there's so many people that have gone before me that have, that have played such great music and I can learn from so many books and, uh, and videos. But there comes a point, there comes a time when you start making your own music. Now, whatever you have listened to throughout your life, you become a result of that. So. Let's say I listen to rock music my whole life. I've been putting in my bag, my, just imagine a backpack. I, that's how I think of it, a big backpack with it. I'm just throwing stuff in it all the time. And then eventually I produce something of my own at the end of that. And it's gonna sound like something similar to what I've put in. So what's come into these ears and these eyes, usually something similar is gonna come out. It will never be exactly the same. So it's very good for me to learn and go to school and learn all these things. But there comes a point when I need to also, I need to offer something to the world. You know, you don't want something that sounds exactly like somebody else because it's already been done. <laughs> I put some, put some things in that I like. Some things are things I didn't 
necessarily like, but I had to learn. Maybe I played with a band and they wanted to learn a song, so I had to learn that music. Okay, I put it in and I, I learned and I got a new perspective. And I heard, and I played like another drummer or I play a certain style the way my teacher told me to. So I'm learning that way, but in the end, I need to make something of my own. Now, if you only listen to rock music, when you produce your own things, it's gonna sound like rock and roll, probably, right? You're not gonna sound like jazz because you haven't put anything, you haven't listened to it. Uh, American drummers have an incredibly difficult time playing Afro-Cuban music because they didn't grow up listening to it. It wasn't on the radio. They didn't hear it in church. They didn't hear it in the, in the car. Uh, their parents weren't listening to it. But if they were, or you grew up in a family that had a, div a very diverse musical uh, listening environment, you will, you will produce something more colorful, more uh, unique, because it has different styles put together. I was fortunate to have heard a lot of different styles of music growing up and when I when I play music I can often move in and out of different styles and the way I became more diverse as a as a drummer is I was playing on on stage live with many different singers would come up I was, I was playing in church different singers would come up so I was playing different styles of music also and then I went to music school and learned different styles, learned samples of different styles and put those in my bag as well. So learning other people's stuff is, is good. But when it comes to creating your own thing, your mind has to make a switch to I'm producing something unique. And how do you do that? How do you make something new? Well, first of all, you have to have permission. You have to feel like you are allowed to do that when we're younger you're asking the teacher what do i do how do i do it they teach you that this is this is what you're supposed to learn this is what's going to be on the test you do this so unless your teacher taught you how to be creative and say create something new here's some coloring here's some crayons here's a blank palette make something but a lot of times we're learning other people's stuff so Creating your own music requires you to make the switch in your mind to, I'm not learning other stuff, uh, other people's things. I'm making something now. I'm gonna offer something new to the world. What am I gonna offer them? I'm gonna offer my own perspective, my own thoughts. And if I feel free to do that, I might make something. I might try something and I might like it, I might not, but it will develop and it can turn into something that I really enjoy and I wanna share with other people. So for me, I made the switch in my mind that I was just talking about. I made that switch of from learning other people's music and, and producing something that sounded like other people to making my own thing. When I heard a story about this uh, organization that did, they, they put on concerts for youth. When I was younger, I was going to those concerts. I was watching these concerts and then they just stopped doing these concerts. I said, what happened? Why didn't they do these concerts anymore? They said that, it, our time is done. Our generation of putting these concerts on is done. It's time for the new generation to put on something. That was the first time it really hit me that said, that where I realized that it's my turn. When I was younger, I was learning other people's music, but now I'm older and people are coming to me asking me to teach them. I already had students for years before that, but it, I suddenly realized yeah, it's my turn. I have to make something. I have to bring something to the table, bring something to the world. And I have permission because these guys are saying, we're done. It's your turn. You know, don't wait. I'm not waiting anymore on other people to tell me what to do. I'm the one that gets to create these events, create music. And I can do that. I can put it out there.
I would much rather work with other artists, with other musicians, and actually that's one of the reasons I play music. I like to work with other people. If I play by myself, I get a little bored. It's like playing basketball by yourself. You know, I, I like shooting. I like the basketball. I like even even dunking the basketball by myself. But when you play as a team or against somebody else, it's so much more fun. And with music, it's the same way. We play off of each other. Somebody will have an idea, present it, and I'll play something back or together, or we agree on an idea together. So you because you have much more music, much more content is created, much more creativity is spawned through working with other people, which leads me to say, you better choose wisely who you work with, because if you work with great musicians or people that are better than you are, you're probably it's probably going to pull you to a new level, another place. You know, they're going to have more ideas, and then it'll help you to pull out more ideas or force you to think in, in a different way. I've worked with a lot of singer-songwriters who write a song. They, they probably have some band in, their, in the back of their mind playing, but then when they actually get together with the band, it changes. Everything changes. And I think that's, that's, that's okay. Uh, there's nothing they can really do about it. And as a, as a musician, as a drummer, uh, there's also things that I play by myself. And then uh, when I work with other people, it you know, the way I play it, the way I, the way I feel it changes also. So as a drummer, I rarely write my own music with the lyrics and the, and the chords and melodies like that. But recently I started working with a composer uh, who helped me pull out the ideas that are in my head. And it was really interesting how it all came to be. Now I didn't write or approach the song the way a singer-songwriter might with a, with a guitar or with a piano. I wrote it from the drum set. Now, how do you do that? Well, I had melodies. I still have melodies and chords in my head. But how do I produce that without playing the piano? So I, so the best thing I think that I could do was I had the ideas. I presented them to this composer. I showed it to him, uh, gave him my ideas, and now he was fully capable to produce the sounds that were in my head. He could hear, in a sense, what I was hearing. Now, when he played it, that it had a different feel, which is okay because that's the way it always ha works. When you put something out there, when you work with another person, it changes. It takes a new shape. And that's interesting, and that's fun, and that's what we enjoy doing as musicians. So it's interesting to see how music can take shape based on the different people you work with. Everybody has a different perspective and a different feel and, a different, and different ideas. So something that I might have created in my mind will completely change depending on who I work with. I do tend to, for myself, I, I tend to like the stuff that's more organic, something that's, you can hear some imperfections. As a musician, if I hear a drummer or a guitar player play something that they, I, I, I can feel where they were wanting to go, but they didn't actually get there. They, they're, maybe their, their technique wouldn't allow something that their mind was trying to get uh, accomplished. But they made it work. They went with what they had and they gave it their best shot. I love that. I love to see this process. I think that's what's uh, 
um, human about music. And if we, we go in and we quantize everything, we make everything perfect, you lose the humanness. And that's, for me, that's not fun. You sense that something's not real about it. You can, you can just, you just have a sense of awareness about it. And I think that's why we like, um, that's why we like to see reality TV. That's why we like to see uh, live streaming. We like to see real human nature along with its imperfections. Not that we shouldn't strive to be better or develop, but the process is beautiful. Also, the process is really enjoyable to watch. I like watching others more than I like watching myself in process because I always have this idea of this ideal of where I want to go. And if I'm not there, then I'm always striving to get there. But if I can, if I can enjoy it as if I'm a, a viewer, for example, if I'm watching one of my favorite artists practice, I'm not working as hard as he is when I'm watching. I'm just watching him. And if he's working hard and he's making some mistakes, but he's enjoying it, I enjoy it even more. But if he's striving and he's making mistakes and he's like just frustrated, I can feel that in his music and I can feel that in, in his life and it's not fun, you know. So I want to see uh, somebody who can enjoy the process and that's what I try to do. I try to enjoy the process, not just produce something that's always perfect because in, the reality is we're never going to reach that ideal that's in our head. Even when you get to that place where it is ideal, the person who produced it still feels like there's something more to be developed in that. Now, when I watch somebody else play, like if I see Dennis Chambers, for example, play something, I think that's ideal. That's perfect playing. But he might not feel that way. So I think what we need to do as artists is accept the process and enjoy the process, enjoy the journey to that. And if we can, I think we'll really enjoy music more. We need to enjoy just holding the drumsticks, playing and exploring. And what I what I see my son do, he explores everything. He's not worried about performance, he's exploring. And I think that's what we need to do also. We need to explore and enjoy uh, the journey of music. Fear can hinder our growth, hinder my growth as a musician if, I'm, if I let it. If I'm afraid of what that people are not going to receive me well or fear of rejection, then it can really stifle my, my performance. And I think to be a good musician, to be a good artist, you have to get past that fear part. You have to get past. You can't just say, I don't care what people think. That's not reality. We do care what people think about us. I think a lot of times we have fear because we're afraid that what we produce won't be received well. And we're thinking of our audience as these judges or people that are testing us when in reality they're not. I had a friend of mine that, that uh, said, Jason, if you're going to fantasize that people are talking about you or thinking about you all the time, you might as well fantasize that they're, that they're saying good things about you. Hey, look at this handsome guy that walked in the room. Opposed to, who, who does this guy think he is? You know, there's a big difference. Look at this handsome guy walking in the room. If I can, I don't have to lie to myself and say things that aren't true, but I can say, I can say, maybe they're saying good things about me. But there is this weird thing that we, talking about all the imperfections that we see in our own music. The listener isn't sitting there searching and analyzing the way we do as musicians. And if you put something out there that's good, great, they'll, they'll enjoy it. One of my teachers told me in, in, in journalism school, don't let great become the enemy of good. And what she meant was, don't let this ideal of perfection 
stop you from producing good content. If we can get past that and just put something out there that's good, then the next album or the next thing that we produce can be better. When you're creating new things, when you're making your own uh, music, I can sit there for hours and hours and hours trying to perfect this one thing. I think we should practice hard and make it as good as we can. But there comes a point where that's enough. That thing is not going to consume my whole life and take all of my time. There's an end to it. And if it's not good, if it's not good, I'm not going to show it maybe. But then there's a whole nother element to this is if you play live and you have to put something out there, then you do your best. You just do your best. And if it's not perfect, and if even if it's not good, well, you'll receive some criticism and then you'll get to try again the next time. But for me, to be creative means I have to get past fear. I have to be willing to put something out there. And in for the most part, when I create something, it's good. And, and people are enjoying it. If it wasn't, I probably wouldn't be doing drums. You know, if I, if I was doing some other thing, it might not be good. But drums, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. I can put something good out there. But perfection, that's... In the eyes of the beholder, it's a perspective, I think, that we don't need to try to reach. So getting past perfection and being willing to grow and being willing to put out good and getting better is, is really key. When you get encouragement from people after every time you play and they say, good job, wow, you sounded great, you can ask them why or what sounded good because a lot of people don't know how to give constructive feedback. They will say, good job. And you say, thank you. But what was good about it? And then if you start asking people, they tell you some of the things that they like, then you suddenly realize that, hey, I have something that people like. And when I realize that I have something that people like to hear, I want to, I want to make more of it. Naturally, I want to make more. As musicians, we tend to also compare with other people. This drummer is very fast, or this musician is very, very popular because of this or whatever. So rather than comparing with people, there's a trap. Comparison is a trap. When I see something good, even if they're the same age or somebody younger than me, if somebody does something even better than me, stop for a moment and say, good job. That was amazing. How did you do that? Or what did you do? I want to, I want to keep that childlike awe about, about music. And I found that very helpful. And people receive it well because when I encourage another musician and I say, well, or especially a drummer, because I'm a drummer. If I say, yeah, you, you sound amazing. That was, that was great. They light up. They, they like to hear that. They're, they're thankful because they don't get to hear it enough, I think, from other musicians. We often look, I can do that, or I can't do that, or you know, there's this comparison thing. It's not, it's not healthy. Rather say, that part, I really enjoyed that. And that, when I, when I can get, have that attitude... That also helps me to enjoy my own playing more and and helps me not be afraid to put something out there also yeah, that's unique. I don't have to outdo the, the next guy. I can just be myself.
the musicians that influenced me the most, I can name a lot of people, but I would have to say my father, my, my dad, Rufus Coffey, who is no longer with us, um, really taught me uh, how to enjoy music, how to play music. He taught me the drums when I was young. He gave me a Beach Boys record and a Credence Clearwater Revival record, some headphones, and an old used set of drums that he bought at a pawn shop. And he was a bass player, so he, he knew music, and he knew a little bit about the drums to teach me the basics, and he let me go from there. He taught me how to play the kick drum with his bass. So when he would play the bass rhythms, he taught me to play the kick, kick drum with whatever he played on the bass. And little did I know that that is a very important lesson in, in drumming that the bass and the drums are a rhythm section. They're, they're uh, supposed to work together. So my dad taught me a lot, but the, the main thing that he taught me was to not be afraid to sit in with people. I remember very clearly when I was eight years old, nine, maybe I was nine years old, I had just got my drums. I didn't know how to play my drums yet. But there was a country music band just down the street that was rehearsing. And he said, why don't you go play drums for them? They didn't have a drummer at that time, or the drummer was absent. And I said, I can't play the drums with them. I don't know how to play drums for them. And he said, don't be afraid. Go over there. Just go down the street. Go, go sit in with them. And I was terrified. It, but he encouraged me. And I went to that room. And I sat down with those guys and a big drum set and I joined them. I don't know, I don't remember what I played or if I played, I'm sure it wasn't good or great music. I wasn't playing, yeah, I just started learning, but it was an important lesson he taught me. He said, don't be afraid and go out there and do it. Music has the ability to express emotion, where words and conversation, you can express a lot of different emotions, but music takes it to another level. You have harmonies, you have melodies, you have rhythms, these things that support your feeling. You watch any movie, take Jaws, for example, the movie Jaws, a shark is chasing somebody in the water and they're swimming. And, and you might see uh, the camera shoot the, the shark and then shoot the person and you, you see it go but if you add music to that it adds this emotion of intensity you start going faster and faster and faster and you can feel the shark actually coming in inches away that's what music does it, it supports our emotions it enhances our emotions it brings out our emotions if you're if you're in love you write a love song you can feel that love in a different way. If you are angry or you have a lot of energy, you can put some guitars, heavy guitars or drums behind that and you can feel the energy from that too. A lot of workout music, you're running, you're exercising, but you put music to that, you can go you can go longer distances, you, you have more endurance. But I think that's what music offers. It offers something of enhancement to your emotions and your thoughts. So I love performing, but I love teaching as well. If I only played music and didn't get the chance to teach, I would be really sad. Yeah, I have two younger brothers and I love teaching them things. I, would, I was kind of the pioneer. I would go and explore things, I would try new things, and then I would show them. 
hey, be careful of this, or look how fun this is, or you got to taste this. It's so good. It's in my nature to share things. I love teaching to students. When I teach, I get a new perspective. I put myself in the shoes of the student. I try to think the way they think. I try to learn from their perspective. So I get a new perspective. I learn more than I knew before. And it forces me to think about things deeper. Uh, think about something I may inherently know. If I have to teach them, I have to think about it deeper. I get to learn a whole nother layer. I also enjoy teaching because I like to see students get there. They want to learn something. I like to help them get there. So that's, in a way, that's performing as well. You're you're helping somebody get from point A to point B. And when you see them get it and you see the smile on their face or you see them get excited about learning, that I get great satisfaction from that. It makes me want to teach even more, show them more. I also like to break ideas down. So complex ideas, some, a, lot of th- a lot of times drumming is very fast. And when you see it, it looks like the drummer is somewhat of a magician. They just do this magic trick that is like impossible to accomplish. I like to show the student, like, let me show you. Let's break it down. Let's slow it down. Let me show you. Let's pick these pieces apart. Let's dissect the, 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 the music and let's learn it. Because the fact is, it's not magic. The brain is very capable of producing some very fast and complex things. But it's human. It's still human. You can still do it. Yes, sir.